It's that time of the year again when you take all your jackets and woolens out, turn on your heaters, and prep yourself to go through the brutal Toronto winters. If this is your first winter in Canada, then you are at the right place because this video is the only guide you will need to know how to survive Canadian winters. Last year, I moved to Toronto and I had my fair share of winter struggles where I made a lot of mistakes and because I made those mistakes, you don't really have to. And after all those mistakes and experiences, I have created this guide where we will be talking about these topics and by the end of it, I hope you'll be ready to battle the cold weather this country is famous for. The first thing you need to know is how to prep yourself. I moved to Toronto last year and it's not hidden that Toronto winters are brutal. It might say that it's 5 degrees but it feels like 2 because it's so windy and the wind chill makes the weather feel colder. And that is why the first and foremost thing you need for yourself is a winter jacket. And before we get into how to pick a jacket, I really want to put it out there that getting a jacket from home or your home country is not going to work for Canadian weather because the jackets over here are made to battle this kind of weather. You might be fine for like the milder winter days, but when it gets extremely cold, those jackets are of no use. So do not waste your money getting those things. Coming back to getting your first winter jacket. When you go out shopping, you will find there are two types of jackets. Conventional jacket, technical jacket and technical jackets are the ones that you're looking for. These are basically down jackets which have down fill of a certain power. It can range from 550 to 700, 800 down fill power. The more the down fill power, the warmer it is going to be and the more negative temperature it can handle. They should also be waterproof and windproof for the snowy days. Make sure it has a hood and if it has fur on the hood, that's even better because fur helps to break the wind when it's windy. You will thank yourself for getting a jacket with a furry hood. Apart from these, make sure your zippers are covered with a piece of fabric so when it's windy, the wind doesn't go inside. You'll notice a lot of times these jackets are long. They are called parkas if they're long and they are covering until your knees. This helps to keep your legs warm as well as dry during snowy days. And if you're not getting a longer jacket and you decide to get a cropped or a puffer jacket, make sure that there is an elastic waistband that actually grips on your body so the wind doesn't go underneath. And I'm saying all of these things because when you go out and it's windy, you really don't want the wind to hit your body it gets so cold and it sometimes can be piercingly chilly last year when i was shopping for my winter jacket i documented all of my experience and i have made a video out of it which is a full-fledged winter shopping guide in toronto and i have told you everything from mid-range budget to expensive places to where you can get different types of winter jackets it's very detailed video so if you want you can go check it out it's the link is right here but out of all the things that i bought last year these are my favorite ones Oh, just before that, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because I come up with these kind of guides and vlogs every week and you don't want to miss that. When I was looking for jackets, I went around so many places and then I found Aritzia Super Puff. I had read and seen a lot of vlogs about this particular brand and then when I went to check it out, I found out why it's worth the hype. Because this is one of the best jackets I own. I got the cropped version and it's this much. Let me, let me show you one sec. Okay, this is how much it is. I love to wear it. I wear it almost every single day when I'm going out in winters. This is my most worn jacket and for Toronto winter where it goes almost around minus 10, minus 15, this jacket can handle it. And you can simply layer it up if you need a few more layers of warmth. This is the perfect jacket for women. I absolutely love it. You cannot go wrong with it. And the thing with Aritzia is that you can go and get a few different choices with the Super Puff. They come in different lengths, different uh, downfill power. This one doesn't have a fur on the hood, but there are versions which have fur on the hood. And if you go to Aritzia, there's like a separate section for Super Puffs. So if you are not really um, stuck on budget, because this is slightly on the expensive side, you can go and check it out. Um, I got this one for $278 last year. Right now, different versions have different pricing. This crop version is still $278. You can go check this, check it out and see how you find it. But this is the best investment I had made last year because I wore it almost every day. And for the extreme winter days, I have got the Eddie Bar uh, parka jacket. It's kind of like, it's not a parka as such, but since I'm short, it actually fits me right. And this jacket is the perfect length. Other parkas are really long for me and some like go all the way to my ankle and they don't look good. I really need stuff to look good on me. So this jacket is the perfect length. And yeah, if I forgot to mention, I'm 5'2". So this is the jacket for petite women. I have 
put down the links to both the jackets down in the comment section below so you can check it out but this is for those days when it's really really cold like there were a few days when it was minus 20 and even beyond that this jacket worked well for it it is so warm that I cannot really wear it otherwise. I would suggest that you get such a heavy duty jacket if you are going out occasionally during winters. I did not, so I did not have that much uh, use out of it. But this is the warmest jacket I own. Wait, I also have jacket recommendations for men, okay? My partner gave three recommendations of jackets that he loves and he wore every single day during last winters. The first one is a Jack and Jones jacket, which is not technically winter jacket but it does have some features it's water repellent it has recycled lining and it has like a storm cuff and trust me he wore this every single day and he swears by it it's really really warm i don't know the name of the jacket if i find it uh, i'll put it in the description box but he loves this jacket he wore it every single day another jacket that he owns that he really likes and that is for up to minus 15 degrees is it's a canada goes Okay, it's controversial, but um, Canada Goose jackets are really great. Yes, they are super expensive. This one was really expensive, but this is an investment, honestly. And if you can afford it, I would definitely say like go for Canada Goose. You don't really need to think otherwise, but only if you can afford it. If you can't, if you think it's a lot, don't don't buy it. Uh, but this is his second favorite jacket. He wears this most of the times after that one. Um, that one was I think 200 something dollars this one I'm not telling you the price but it was expensive um, this is a jacket that you would see yourself wearing for about 10 years but if you can't invest in a Canada goose there's one more another Eddie bar this is the heaviest jacket I mean you can see it's heavy like it's literally heavy uh, it's the winter jacket it's technical it has hood fur it's like it has uh, insulated inside it also has downfill it's water resistant water repellent like this locks up so there's no wind going inside it's long so it covers your butts it ticks all the boxes I think price point wise also this was a little cheaper um, if you go into any bar you'll see like their price range is pretty much affordable for a good winter jacket and these things you don't really wear just for one season Considering it's Toronto, you wear these jackets for at least six months. So investing in a good jacket is actually very important. I have only seen him wear it twice. Maybe because he doesn't really need to go out that often. But if you need to go out that often, if you have a job where you have to catch a bus or you have to be out outdoors, you need this kind of jacket. Those won't do. Um, so yeah, this is one of his recommendations. This is also Weather Edge. That means it's water repellent. Uh, and I think it protects you up to minus 40 degrees, which is amazing. It doesn't go minus 40 in Toronto, but if needed, you can wear it. Now let's talk about shoes. When you're buying winter boots, you just need to remember a few things. They should be waterproof, at least ankle length, and they should have good traction to walk on snow. And if you find something that has an insulated lining, that is even better. And when you're trying it on, make sure you wear thick socks so you can know if you need to size up or size down. Um, okay. Don't judge me and I have a confession to make. I went crazy last year and this is a reminder that you don't really need to do this. Don't do it if you're even thinking about it. Um, so yeah, I want to show you my shoe collection, my winter shoes collection. I am absolutely guilty of over buying shoes, okay? You don't need that many pairs of shoes for winters. You only need one warm pair of winter boots and that's it. I don't know what I was thinking. I just like, I went, I went crazy. So I have that many pair of, pairs of shoes. I think three of them are my boots, which I can't really like wear in snow or winters because they don't have any traction. <sighs> and one is hiking boots, so that's like separate. But apart from that, I only use two pairs of shoes for winters, which are winter boots. And that is all you need. One and two. This not that often, but this one, yes. These are Timberlands. And if you see the sole, what I was talking about before, 
you exactly need these kind of shoes and it's ankle length it's just above the ankle for me um for me it's perfect i mean i really like it this one also has like a furry inside if you're staying somewhere where it snows a lot more you need a pair of boots which are till your knees i guess and this one is also like i wear it in winters but i wear it when i am wearing a dress or something when i want to dress up um this one also has fur lining inside um it's water repellent tread and everything you need that for like winter boots so these are my second favorites and i want to show you this pair of winter boots from sorel which i bought because i thought i would need it i did not need it and it's been sitting in the box ever since i bought them this was a waste of money for me i see i told you like this is i i went insane this is crazy don't make this mistake you need these kinds of boots these were the kinds of boots i was saying that you will need if you live in a place where there's like a lot of uh like pile up a pile up of snow i live in downtown i don't really need these boots because the snow gets cleared very very quickly if you live, live in suburbs or places that are inside where the snow doesn't get cleared that off that quickly you need these boots for like work for going out see like this is the stuffing is still in there i have the receipt it still has a tag on i did not even wear it once but this is a sorel boot which is a really great brand for uh, for winter boots this is the kind of boot you need for like heavy winters heavy snowfall um it has also like leather patching to like protect your shoe and foot from getting wet and cold i can't really say any review about it i mean i haven't worn it but i have heard good things about it and it was like a recommended pair so i got it I'm trying to sell it. If you want to buy it, let me know in the comment section. I'll talk to you. I really want to sell this pair of boots. No one wants to buy it from me. I also have recommendation for men's footwear, which is Timberlands again. This is also uh, my partner's. Obviously, I don't wear men's footwear. These boots, he said, were pretty good. It looks good. It does the job. It's very heavy duty. It has like got that traction that you need for uh, walking on snow. It's water resistant, water repellent. and it keeps your feet warm um so all the men out there who are looking for boots this is a recommendation these are good and the last part of winter clothing is accessories and base layers things like scarves gloves beanies socks hats all of these things are super super important and are going to protect you from the cold they are your essentials that should be in your bag at all times because you never know how the weather changes and And apart from that you should also get some base layers or thermals. My suggestion is to get them from Uniqlo because their heat tech gear is really good and it's very thin so you don't really sweat as such but it keeps your body warm. That's what both of us also have and they are not that expensive either. And in Canadian winters you need to learn how to layer up. So only a jacket does not do all the time. Depending on the weather you start with the thermals then put on a fleece layer and then if you want you can put on a jumper and then your jacket. So sometimes three or four layers is not very uncommon. How to layer up totally depends on yourself but you should be wearing clothes in layers so you can take them off when you go somewhere or put stuff on when you're going out. Personally I just wear three layers of clothes and that's all that works for me. One more really useful thing that you can use during winters are hand warmers or and feet warmers. You can easily get them on Amazon and basically these are one time use uh, little pouches which you put on your gloves and inside your socks. That was all about clothing and the next thing that I'm going to tell you all about is how to prep your car for winters. Prepping your cars for winters is not just a necessity, it's a safety requirement. And it starts with getting winter tires. Normal conventional tires do not work in snow so you need to get another set of tires which are specifically known as winter tires and have this particular symbol on them. They are specifically designed to be driven on snow and they have a larger tread so the car doesn't slip in snowy conditions. As soon as the winter months start coming you need to switch out your regular tires with winter tires and ensure that the tire pressure is optimal. A lot of accidents in Canada happen because people were not using the right kind of tires for the right kind of weather. So getting these tires are pretty important. Because temperatures most of the time is sub zero in Canada, using just plain water in windshield liquid does not really work. So for these kind of weather conditions, there are specific windshield liquids which are made to sustain up to minus 40 degrees Celsius and this is what you need to use during winters in Canada. You can find them in stores like Canadian Tire and you can switch out the liquid before the season begins so you don't get into any kind of accidents during driving. One more thing that you can do which is optional is rust proof your car. 
Because of the snow, the bottom of car and the tire rims are very prone to getting rusty. So getting them rust proof in advance basically extends the longevity of your car. And another must have thing that you can find on Amazon and you should absolutely have on yourself is this windshield scraper. One side of this tool helps to remove snow from your car and the other side helps to scrape ice from the windows and the windshield. Don't forget to get your car serviced before the winter season and this is how you get your car ready for winters. And lastly, the only thing left to prep is your home. If you live in a condo, then this doesn't really apply to you. But if you don't, then after every snowfall, you have to clean your sidewalk. And it is usually an everyday thing because it snows so much in Canada. Every province has their own laws around this. But generally, if there is a snowfall and it covers your sidewalk and driveway, you have to clear those areas from the snow to prevent any accidents. And it's kind of a legal obligation. So every morning after it snows, you have to get up, get your shovel and start plowing. If you live in Ontario, you need to clear your sidewalk and driveway of the snow it ha that has accumulated within 12 hours of a snowfall. And I've found a really cool website where you can find out which roads have been cleared of snow and which have not. It is not active right now, but once it starts snowing, this website will be updated and you will get daily updates of which streets still have snow and which have been cleared. It's called Plow to Map and it is available online. Links in the description box. And if you think this video is helpful, if you are still sticking around, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. You can find these snow clearing tools in any grocery store or Canadian tire and they are not that expensive I think. I have never done this but I have seen people doing it so I think this is something every person should have before the snow season starts. I mean every person not living in a condo. And a few extra tips before we finish the video is that if you are coming here, if you're a new immigrant, bring vitamin D supplements and start taking them. Because in most part of Canada, seeing sunlight during winter is a rare occasion and there can be and there can be a vitamin D deficiency. And that is why vitamin D supplements are very important on a regular basis. And if you live in Toronto, let me remind you that Toronto winters are pretty dry. So don't forget to moisturize and hydrate yourself. And most importantly, enjoy the winters. Winters in Canada are obviously very brutal, but that doesn't stop the life, does not stop all the cities. And a different side of Canada can be seen during this season. From multiple winter activities to winter festivities to holiday season, there is a lot going on, specifically in Toronto, which I will be experiencing this year. And I have, I'm going to make this winter season all about doing things outdoors and I will be vlogging everything about it. So if you are moving to Canada and you think your life will be stopping here in this season, it will not. Just go out there and indulge in different kinds of activities that you like. Try and see what you find interesting and enjoyable so that your life doesn't get boring here. I will share all I will be doing during this winter season and what you can do in Toronto. So subscribe to my channel and if you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to turn on the bell notifications because I post videos every Sunday. I'll see you next week. Bye.